Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Keep Exploring. On this episode, I'm exploring the country of Ireland. On Tuesday, I flew from Nantes, France to Dublin, Ireland, and it took about an hour and a half. The first thing I did when I arrived in Dublin was grab some fishing crisps, as they call them here, uh, from the world famous Leo Burdock. After dinner on the river, I went to my first ever hostel and checked in. It was called Abigail's Hostel. It was right in the middle of downtown Dublin. The hostel I stayed in housed about 12 different people in my room. Uh, there was two showers between us and two bathrooms. Uh, it was a mixed room, meaning boys and girls. Um, people from all over the world were staying there and exploring Dublin just like myself. After getting settled into the hostel, I went and checked out Dublin's famous Temple Bar Street. While there, I stopped at places such as the Temple Bar, other local pubs, and all of this was within a five mile walk of my hostel. Naturally, to celebrate my first night in Dublin and my first ever solo trip, I had to grab a pint of Guinness and see what all the hype was about. However, after going out on town for a little bit, I wanted to get a good night's rest for the following morning. I had a full day tour planned and I wanted to get a good night's sleep in the hostel. The next morning, I woke up at 5.30 a.m. and headed to the bus stop for my full day trip across the entire country of Ireland. The first place we visited on the tour were the Cliffs of Moher. These are located on the far western coast of Ireland. Many famous movies and shows, such as Harry Potter and the Game of Thrones, have had scenes shot at these cliffs. Unfortunately, pictures and videos just do not do this place any justice. The sheer size and magnitude of these cliffs are breathtaking. After spending about an hour and a half exploring the cliffs, we headed down the hill to Doolin, and we stopped at a cozy Irish pub known as Fitzpatrick's Pub, for a nice lunch. After an incredible and very filling lunch, we hit the road again and headed toward Galloway. On our journey, we stopped in the burn and saw the famous limestone fields. We finished our tour in Galloway, Ireland. Galloway is known for their colorful buildings, their pubs, and their street musicians. On every corner, you can find some of the most talented artists and singers that you've ever heard. This is where artists such as Ed Sheeran was discovered. This is a young and vibrant town, and it is also the fifth largest city in Ireland. After a quick stop, lasting about an hour in Galloway, we were on the road again and headed towards Dublin. Unfortunately, or maybe even fortunately, depending on how you spin the situation, I was unable to stay at Abigail's Hostel again as there was no more rooms available, so I got a hotel in the northern part of Dublin. I didn't really have a ton on the itinerary for today. I woke up and I walked around Trinity College of Dublin, which was about a two mile walk from my hotel. Um, I was just admiring some of the campus architecture. Um, every single building there is a historic building um, and a big tourist attraction. Um, but I was doing that while I was waiting for my tour of the Book of Kells. Um, all the tours there are self-guided. It costs roughly 20 euros to walk through the exhibit. Um, and when you get there, they give you an audiobook to kind of help explain the process and what the Book of Kells really is as you're walking through the exhibits. Um, unfortunately, they do not allow any video or uh, photographs of the Book of Kells to uh, preserve its natural state. From there, you walk into the Long Hall. This is the room that is filled with statues of famous philosophers and various ancient literature. Um, there's just books lined all across the entire hall. I don't know the actual length of it, um, but you can see in the video here, it's just super long, filled with books and uh, very nice statues and whatnot of these philosophers. Following my tour of the Book of Kells, I walked across the street to the Irish Whiskey Museum. I got a one hour tour that costed $23 and it walks you through the history of Irish whiskey, such as the world renowned Jameson, uh, Tula Mordu, um, and it explains how they are created and the origins of the alcohol in Ireland. Now, there's now golden and amber in colour and basically it doesn't taste like fire and death, it tastes like uh, vanilla and hope and hopes and dreams and whatever other pretentious nonsense we say about whiskey. This is mortifying, I mean, and it's the same with the Scots, right? Because we was talking to a, a guy over in Scotch the Scotch distillery, you got more or less we did it the same way. By behaving like drunk squirrels, and losing the barrels of alcohol and finding them years later, we discovered the maturation of whiskey. That's how we figured it out. More than that, we weren't the only ones. The pirates also, as they were traveling around the seas, realized that the longer they kept rum in casks, it would darken and mellow with flavor. We figured out very quickly what was happening. 
we store putching in oak barrels, right? Oak is a very sweet, soft wood. And you'll see here, this is an actual salve from a Cooper's barrel. You can see the inside is blackened because we used to scorch the inside of the barrels, whoops, to disinfect them. And you'll see here, I don't know if you guys can get an image of that, you probably want for your camera. This is the whiskey line. That is how far alcohol will penetrate. It'll really get in there. And we realized that as we lost these barrels and found them again, as the seasons went by, the barrel would expand and contract. The putching in this sweet blend. What I will say for that one though, you guys, have you had a drink already today, yeah? Now we get to Friday. This was my last full day in Ireland. I walked about three miles to see the Dublin castle. Um, it costs about 12 euros to do the tour of the castle, um, which is actually pretty cool and I would say worth the money because they show you the remains of the original castle that was um, that dates back far too long ago for me to remember what the date was I actually gave, but um, you can still see some of the remnants of the wall and the moat, um, still some of the river that is actually running through um, underneath of Dublin right now. Um, but it was all destroyed in a massive fire in the 16th century. Um, so we get to see the original uh, artifacts and uh, castle wall, which was very unique. They have rebuilt a modern day palace of where the castle was. It was supposed to uh, emulate that of what the original castle would have looked like. Um, and they did a fantastic job. Um, even that though is still pretty old. Um, again, I'm not entirely sure of the date that that was built on, um, but you can look that up and find that online, I'm sure pretty easily. As you get towards the end of the tour, they uh, actually lead you on a self-guided portion of it and you kind of just walk around what is now government buildings um, and rooms um, that they have preserved with all a bunch of ancient photographs or, or paintings, I guess rather, um, of you know famous presidents, famous um, kings of, of Ireland and whatnot. Um, but uh, the coolest part was that they let you walk through the room where all the uh, modern day presidents, anyone that's been, been sworn in as president of Ireland um, actually gets sworn in at. So that was really cool to see as well. And then of course, if you don't want to pay the 12 euros, uh, that's totally fine. You can still see a good uh, portion of the castle outside um, without paying. And you can also walk around the back and there is a beautiful garden um, with a lot of cool art located around that as well. After wrapping up at the castle, uh, I decided to walk downtown a little bit further and I ran into Christ Church Cathedral. Uh, you can do a tour of that for about 10 euros. Um, and from what I read, a lot of the beauty of the place is actually located on the outside, which is free to the public. So I did not opt to pay for the inside tour. I just snapped a few photographs and videos from the outside. Following that, I headed to a quick dinner at the Botanical, which was ironically uh, located at the bottom of my hotel, so that worked out super well uh, for efficiency's sake. But um, that's one of the best places I had to eat in the entire time I was here in Ireland, uh, and I would highly recommend stopping at the Botanical if you guys ever make your way over here. But after a long four days in Ireland, I am exhausted. Um, so I was ready for a night in and uh, just went back to the room at about 9 p.m. and turned in for the night, getting ready for my flight back to Nantes, France the following day. That concludes my trip to Ireland. Um, all in all, the trip was fantastic. I mean, just beautiful scenery, beautiful countryside, mountains, cliffs, uh, farm animals, I mean, even the city of Dublin. I'm not much of a city guy, but this one just felt very homey and clean and safe. Um, the food was fantastic. The drinks were probably a little bit better than the food even. Um, but yeah, I would highly advise you guys um, putting this on your bucket list. I'm really happy I got to do this. The first solo trip was a success, but um, just a lot of cool opportunity here in, in Ireland. And I uh, strongly advise you guys to put that on your bucket list. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, don't forget, keep exploring. See you guys.